Okay, so Boker Tov, good morning. On this uh, fine Sunday morning, let me take a little walk around over here because I am in Brooklyn, New York. Just want to show you a little bit uh, where I am. This is a self portrait of my father in law. A picture that he. Uh, Native himself, which is what self-portrait means. Let me turn the camera around over here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna sit down on the couch. I am here in Brooklyn, New York. If it's a little shaky, uh, it's because I'm traveling and um, don't have the usual stand that stabilizes the phone. I show you the picture of my father-in-law because I'm very sort of proud some of you might have seen that one of his pictures, uh, I'm not sitting in front of a screen, so I would have showed you his, that picture. One of his pictures just sold in an auction for close to a half a million dollars, which I think is the most expensive uh, picture of a sort of religious Hasidic artist uh, ever sold. Uh, I am, so I am told, at least. So I'm very uh, proud of my father-in-law's uh, of blessed memories work and I'm sitting here in, uh, in Brooklyn surrounded by some of his art um, <clears throat> some of you might have seen my uh, video from Friday short brief video I'm here in New York because of a very special day it is the 28th anniversary or yard site of the Rebbe's uh, passing on Gimel Tamas it is a very special day um, as uh, I will uh, perhaps elaborate as the class uh, and this talk develops. But first, let's make a bracha. In New York, you can also get some coffee. So let's make a blessing over here. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehakol Niyah Bivara. Now, I know it's a little bit noisy in the background because of the AC. So if uh, you really cannot hear me, please let me know. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> the title of the class is, Are We Elitists? Um, do we discriminate? Are we all equal? And this is a class connected to the Parsha that we just read, Parsha's Korach, and also connected to the special day of Gimel Tammuz, as I just mentioned, the day of the Rebbe's passing, because... The Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe in, in Tanya says that the day of a passing, especially of a tzaddik, of a righteous man, has within it the full concentrated energy of the person's lifetime of work. All their good deeds, all their um, inspiration, all that they have achieved and continue to achieve uh, shines <clears throat> and the energy of the day has within it the concentration of all that so we, when we talk about the Rebbe who continues to inspire millions literally and so many have and continue to be um, influenced and inspired to do good we could only begin or maybe not even begin to appreciate the holiness and inspiration and energy of the day, which is why it's become a day of prayer, a day of reflection, and most importantly, a day of resolution for more good deeds. So on that note, I want to discuss a insight on the Parsha, Parsha Korach, as it relates to the question posted, uh, po uh, the title of this class which is, uh, are we equal, to, uh, are we elitist, discriminate, which is a, a, a topic, not a, a topic is, is, a, is an understatement, it's a, it's a, it's a discussion uh, uh, and somewhat of a passionate discussion in today's society of how we view each other, um, uh, let me let me explain. Let me explain as <clears throat> as the class. First, let me talk about the parsha. And as I always say, Torah is a lesson for life, 
and we're supposed to take the ideas of Torah and apply it to uh, <clears throat> to our to our uh, day-to-day life and struggles and issues, societal issues and so on. <clears throat> so we read the story of Korach. Korach is the story in Numbers in the Bible where Korach comes and he challenges the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu of Moses, the first um, greatest leader of our people, Moses, and he uses several (coughs) arguments in his challenge to Moshe Rabbeinu. And he was extremely persuasive. He, He gathered around him the great leaders, many other of the heads of the court and the Sanhedrin to, um, to join him in his opposition to Moses. There is a fascinating Yismach Moshe. Yismach Moshe was a great scholar. He is the, uh, some of you might be familiar with the Satmar Hasidim. The Yismach Moshe was one of the uh, uh, <coughs> main uh, teachers uh, for the Satmar Hasidim. And he says a fascinating spiritual story about himself. He says that he remembers, the Yismach Moshe was, was a great a tzaddik, and he says the following, he says that he remembers himself in a previous incarnation, uh, in a previous lifetime, and we could maybe, and perhaps we've already, but I'm not, I don't recall, but maybe we could dedicate a class to reincarnation. It's always a, a topic, a subject that as a rabbi you get asked all the time. But uh, <clears throat> for today, he says the following. He says that he, rem- he remembers his soul in a previous life, and he was, he remembers his soul's experience in the generation of the desert. And he was present at the rebellion that Korach led against Moses. And he says while he did not lead, he, sorry, while he did not join the rebellion of Korach, he also did not oppose it. He was on the sidelines. He was what we call today the undecided, um, the middle. Because he says that while <clears throat> Moses performed such great miracles, Nevertheless, Korach's arguments were so persuasive and so many people joined Korach that um, he stayed in the middle rather than oppose Korach. This is what he writes about, his, about himself. So what was it about Korach's argument that was so, uh, so persuasive and, so, uh, uh, and had such, such, uh, such a following where you would think that who would even doubt for a moment Moshe's leadership where Korach leads a rebellion. And this is the first time that we find this kind of open rebellion. Uh, I mean, it's, it's at the birth of our nation, so, so but this, nevertheless, this is all that we could learn from this. So, <clears throat> so one of the lines, one of the lines that Korach uses in his argument to Moshe is the following. He says to Moshe, this is in, in the Bible, he says to Moshe, this is in the Torah, he says, Ki kol kulam kedoshim hashem umadua tisnasu al Hashem. Translation. He says, the entire nation is holy. God is within the entire nation. Why do you raise yourself above the community of God, above the Kahal Hashem. And there are, as every part of the Torah, many interpretations and insights into the, this argument, the core of Korah's argument. One of the explanations, which the Rebbe, as we talk about Gimel Tamas, um, <coughs> develops over here, is that Korach's argument was since everyone is holy we're all God's children we all stood at Mount Sinai God revealed ourselves to all of us why do you Moshe why have you established a hierarchy there's you 
is your brother Aaron as the high priest. You've taken the Jewish people, you've divided them into three groups, the Kohanim, the Levites, the Israelites. You've set separation. That seems to be division. That seems to be elitist. That seems to be discriminatory. Madua tisnasu. Why do you rise yourself above? Why? We're all we're all we're all equal. We're all the same. We're all we are. We all have within us a soul of God. We all are. Um, <clears throat> we all stood at Mount Sinai. That was Korach's challenge, and it's a very convincing challenge. Why do we need separations? You know, today in today's society, uh, that is. Uh, a, a, a uh, argument that you hear very often. You know, why the separation between men and women? Why the separation of, of, uh, of uh, different groups of people? We're all, we're all equal, as it says in the Declaration of Independence, which is a wonderful document. So this was Korach's argument, and... Uh, it's a powerful argument. So the Rebbe answers that while the uh, argument has a place, and what I'm what I'm what I mean by it has a place, there is a perspective and a an arena of truth to that where that is. Uh, 100% true and should not be dismissed. Yes, we are all holy. And yes, we all have a soul. And yes, um, uh, discrimination in, in an unhealthy or, 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 or uh, 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 in a dismissive way is, is not proper and is, and is wrong. However, however, says the Rebbe in explaining what Moses answered Korach that this is not something that I decided, this is something that God set up. God set up that there's a Moses. God set up there's an Aaron. God set up that there are divisions. Because, because Gvulot, in fact, Moshe responded to him and said, Boker v'yoda Hashem, in the morning God will let it be known that whatever I did, says Moshe, Moshe I didn't do on my own, but this is something that God has instructed me. So, what he was, uh, what he was alluding to over here by saying "boker" in the morning, says the Talmud and Rashi, he was saying to uh, Korach, he was responding and saying, just like there is a boundary between night and day, and you cannot break that boundary, you cannot um, remove that boundary. So too, these boundaries. These gvulot that God has set up is something that you cannot remove and is absolutely necessary and healthy and part of our purpose and mission individually and collectively. Which means that in order for a healthy family, a healthy society, a healthy community to exist there has to be boundaries there has to be a understanding of everyone's uniqueness and their roles and if in the name of unity in the name of lack of discrimination you just make one big cholent you make one big melting pot without acknowledging and preserving and respecting the boundaries that each of us have, you do not get unity, you do not get a productivity, you do not, you do not get a healthier, better functioning family, society, community. In fact, the, the, re the reverse is what happens. You get true division. You get this functionality as Korach's argument um, proved that today every single argument that happens, every single dispute 
according to some, is actually a biblical prohibition. And we learned that from what the verse tells us, V'lo yi v'cha'adaso. Every machloket in Hebrew, every strife, every, dis, every fight, every um, discord, is the Torah says, you are violating what the Torah's man, they do not be like Korach. While in the name of unity, you want to tear down divisions, you want to tear down separations that God put within us, within humanity, like you cannot separate night, from, night of day, you have to recognize these boundaries. Every healthy relationship exists within boundaries. Every a productive uh, uh, um, call it a, 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 a group whether it's be it an army be it a classroom be it a business be it a family be it a society the boundaries and the recognition of where once you know my <laughs> I was I was I was giving I was giving one of my grandchildren like a kiss a hug so he says to me he says Zadie you're Zaidi, I'm assuming most of you, give me a thumbs up if you know Yiddish, understand what Zaidi means. He says, Zaidi, you're invading my space. I need my space. <laughs> you know, for some of the bubbies and Zaidis out there, you know, sometimes you have the urge to give your grandchild a, a hug and a kiss. And uh, instead of giving them love, you're actually annoying them. But, you know, that's, that's you know, grandchildren have survived that problem for uh, thousands of years. So... <clears throat> You have to have space. And not only do you have to have space, you must recognize everybody's, and every individual's unique uh, uh, qualities, contribution, purpose, mission, and that's... And then you have a Moshe Rabbeinu. You have the leader who, goes at, who, who knows how to uh, inspire and recognize and bring out and coordinate and bring together everybody's uniqueness into a both healthy, productive, and purposeful fulfillment uh, of of the of the group as a whole in the in the healthiest, proper, godly way. So that is the story of Korach and the lesson that we learn from. Uh, Korach. It is such an important lesson in today's day and age in society today where unfortunately in the name of love or in the name of or in the name of, uh, of unity in the name of progress the blur the blur of roles whether it's biological roles whether it is hierarchy roles it doesn't mean one is better than the other the foot needs the head, the head needs the foot. Um, each one has its unique role. And it is so important. When you mix up the roles, there are two things that happen. The, <clears throat> the role that uh, you're trying to do will not be achieved because it's just not what you could and what you're good at and what you're meant to do. And that which you should be focusing on and what you should do is being neglected. So. So this is this is a, a, a very very important interruption. This is a very very important aspect of how we go ahead and we run and how we live our lives and how we live our society. And that's when you truly bring out the holiness that we all have. These separations are highly highly necessary for ourselves and for life and for our mission and purpose you know there's a story about there's a story about a um, I just read I read a story this morning and it and, and it's about a a couple who unfortunately sadly could not have children they could not have children for years they tried, and uh, God did not bless them with children. So, um, for years they tried, they did not have children. 
And um, finally, after many attempts, uh, medical treatment, uh, the woman became pregnant. She became pregnant, and uh, they were ecstatic. They were ecstatic. Is there a greater blessing than to be able to bring a child into this world? There's nothing greater. And um, they went to the doctor after uh, a thorough checkup and so on. The doctor gave them very uh, distraught news. The news the doctor told them was that unfortunately, the, uh, if the mother goes through with the pregnancy, she, is, she, will, she will not survive. She cannot survive. Her life uh, is at risk or more than just at risk, and uh, he advises to, uh, to, um, to abort the child. They were devastated. All these years, they try and have a child, and this is the news they get. Uh, the doctor says, look, let's give it another little while. I'll make another checkup in a, in a couple of weeks. They go back a, a couple of weeks later for the checkup. The doctor comes back and gives them uh, the same news basically it says you're putting your life on the you, you are definitely endangering your life if you go through with this pregnancy the husband tells his wife we have no choice we have no choice when the mom's life is at danger at that point um, abortion is is uh, not only allowed but uh, that is uh, what you should do. So, uh, but the mother says like this, all this time I've been waiting for a child. I will, uh, I, I am not aborting this child. I'm not aborting this child. That was the mother's adamant um, decision. As much as the husband pleaded with her, sorry, she, refused to uh, abort the child. She went through with the pregnancy, a beautiful boy was born, but sadly and tragically, the mom passed away during childbirth. The father was, uh, 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 as you can understand, a a major mix of joy and uh, and deep mourning and basically dedicated his life to raising this his only child and uh, and uh, the deep loss that he had as a result of, uh, of being blessed with a child caused him to of course be even more dedicated to the raising of this child okay Fast forward, I don't know, 20 years, 25 years, child grows up, teenager, young adult, and um, one day calls, one day calls dad and excitedly tells dad that uh, I found a beautiful girl, I'm getting married. Now I do want to say that throughout the life of the child, the father never told his son how his mom died. He didn't want to burden the child with the knowledge that it's because of him that mother died. He basically said that shortly after his birth, his mom came down with a serious illness and she passed away. That was the information that he raised his child upon. And, uh, okay, she, he sends, uh, getting back here to what's going on, uh, the uh, mom uh, sorry, uh, he sends a, a he sends a uh, calls his dad or he sends him a, a message. I'm not exactly sure, and says that uh, I'm getting married, and then he goes on to share with his father who the girl is, and um, it is clearly and obviously a non-Jewish name. They weren't a religious family, but the dad was really uh, upset about this. Um, and he says to his son, you know, 
I really would like you to marry a Jewish girl. His, he says to his father, why? Religion has never been part of our life. I love this girl. She's a fine girl. She's a wonderful girl. I am going to be marrying her. The father um, tried to plead with him, but he was, he was adamant, determined. And resolute, you know, this is what married. On the morning of the wedding, the father uh, at, tell, tells his son, "Let's go to your mom's grave. This is uh, the day of your wedding." And shortly before he goes into the grave, his father tells him the news. He says to him like this: "He says, I want you to know what happened. Your mom." passed away upon your birth. She gave her away her own life so that you should come into this world. And while we weren't religious, she asked specifically that you should continue the Jewish heritage. You should continue our life's uh, purpose and, and roots as Jews. And that could only happen if you marry a Jewish girl. The boy was very shaken by hearing this. And he says to his dad, I want to go and visit the grave by, my, by myself, on my own. He waited in the car. Okay. He goes into his mother's grave. Father waits in the car. And uh, quite a bit of time goes by and father, finally the father decides to sort of take a peek to see what's going on and he walks over, he walks out of the car and he sees his son crying his son doesn't notice that he's watching him he sees his son crying and he hears his son talking to his mother and at the end the son says to his mom mom I will not disappoint you I will give you Jewish children Jewish grandchildren the father sort of sneaks back to the car. Um, a short while later, the son returns. He come, comes back to his dad and says, Dad, I made my decision. He takes the phone. He calls his girlfriend. He says, I'm really sorry. I will pay for the entire wedding. All the expenses. I love you, but I have to maintain my sort of boundaries, my gvulot the boundaries of my family, the purpose of my soul's mission over here in this world, I will marry a Jewish girl. This is part of the lesson of Korach. We all, Jew, Gentile, Kohen, Lahavdul, Kohen, Levi, Yisrael, we all have our unique gift, purpose, and mission. And only with, when we don't blur these lines do we achieve true unity, genuine unity, holy unity, and in such fulfill our purpose in making and creating a better world, a better family, a better society, and this is so apropos to Gimel Thomas, where we celebrate the Rebbe's energy and anniversary because the Rebbe, as the Moses of our generation, was so amazing in pointing this out and inspiring this in people of, of the recognition of the separation, the necessary, healthy, respectful separations that are needed, and yet really creating leaders in every individual leadership and and bringing forth their deepest individual unique strength and qualities the Rebbe was amazing in bringing that out which is why he continues to be such an effective inspiration in bringing such unity and the best out of people and the healthiest of respect of people to one another. And this is one message that we could take from Gimel Thomas 
a, a very important positive message from the Torah to, to some of the confusion and the darkness that exists out there in the world. The Torah is Torah or a Torah of light. Let us each individually take the energy of this day and bring forth blessings in all that we all need. All of us and all of you listening should be blessed with tremendous abundance materially, physically, spiritually, with a proper focus on what our unique role uh, is, our unique strengths, may it be fulfilled with, in, 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 in a peaceful and, and, and tranquil manner so that you can, uh, we all can, make both ourselves, our family, and the world around us uh, uh, the best and ultimately made it something that the Rebbe yearned for so much, the ultimate promise in the prophets and in the Torah, that we will reach a world, the Messianic age, which is a fulfillment of this discussion in its ultimate sense. May it happen so speedily nowadays. Thank you for listening. Have a fantastic week. Please share these words of Torah with others.